Today, I want to speak my mind. Will it turn out right or wrong? Six months down the road? I don't know. Nobody has a crystal ball to things anyway. But if you have been with me on this journey, commodities over US equities or commodities over tech, then you have also been rewarded big. Because this is what I'm seeing in my own Tiger Brokers account. Ridiculous outperformance. I hope it continues, but I also understand that at some point, it's also not sustainable. But the main topic today is this. Is technology cheap? 37% decline for this particular big tech firm. I want to remove the name away because it's not meant to be personal. But really, big tech firms are cheap. I hate energies that are coming on the market. You know, now market is selling me at a discount. Uh, imagine that somebody is selling you an LV bag at 37% discount. Would you buy it? Bear in mind, if someone is selling you LV bag at 37% discount, you should consider whether it's fake or not. So don't, don't uh, assume things too quickly. But that energy is not likely correct. You know, this quote also comes about quite often. Be greedy when others are fearful. Well, that really depends on how we see things. Because right now, what I see is you should actually be fearful when everybody's greedy. A lot of people in social media space is advocating that this is a downturn that is a great opportunity. Things are going to pick up very soon. And let's pull up a chart that states on the market psychology. What you see over here is we have clearly passed the euphoria phase. Whether we are in complacency phase, which is we need to cool off, the next rally is coming. Or whether we are on anxiety phase, why am I getting margin calls? This dip is taking longer than expected. I guess we are more likely on the anxiety than the complacency phase. A lot of people are asking why this dip is taking longer than expected. A lot of influencers are suggesting that you know, uh, I'm with you, I'm also losing money, it's fine. Uh, this dip will be ending soon and we'll recover. Or is it denial? My investments are with great companies, they will be coming back. And bear in mind, this company which I pull out for you to see, minus 37.4% is obviously a great company. And why do I feel that we are not at capitulation or anger phase? It's quite simple. Do you see people mentioning that they are short selling right now? You know, back in 2020 March, you know, there were people that were mentioning that they are short selling and it's so much better an idea to be short. Actually, fun fact, that is why I dwell a lot into forums and Facebook groups. I want to see how retail investors are bragging because that is a clear indication of whether it's in capitulation or anger. At some point, you start to hear people saying that, yeah, I should be buying this ETF that shot the market or they've been bragging that they've been making money through selling puts or some advertisements saying that, you, are, you can actually make monies in downtrends selling puts. That is a time where it's closer to capitulation and anger where things are finally going to settle. Now, I don't need to assume that I am afraid of buying, that I don't have conviction. This word keeps coming up. I'd like to address it since we are on this conviction topic. You know conviction, this word, it has a strong meaning and it's a bit like love. And I don't know how many that use this word have been investing in markets for 10 years, 20 years when they use the word conviction, conviction. It's like a kid telling me about love when I've been married for 10 years. So <laughs> ridiculous. I hate using that word conviction loosely because quite easily check my proof of work through my past videos that have mentioned how you can profit big from this recession. I've suggested to invest aggressively in that downturn because that downturn and this downturn is a world of difference. You can check for further information. I've mentioned before, I've invested big into oil and gas. One particular stock at the point of time was plus 85%. Two months ago, I've also suggested I'm upgrading the seriousness of this war. Most people are seeing the opportunity wrong and buying into technology at that point of time. I've also suggested top dividend stock. This is actually the hourglass. Check out the price of the hourglass right now. It's at least done a 30% up simply because there's a movement towards luxury watches. What about this? Facebook. 20% more down on the member's channel. That is three months ago. Take a look at where Facebook exactly is as of this point of filming. Now back to this point of anchoring bias. Why are we not anchoring against 2020 pre-pandemic price? You realize that this company is still up 32.92%. Over three years, this is still a very decent 10% year on year growth. It can't be argued to be cheap. What if we look in terms of the five-year performance? You realize that it's done 142%, which means a 20% year-on-year growth. Fantastic, isn't it? Why aren't we anchoring against these previous numbers to think very carefully about valuations?
Now at this point, if you can only remember one thing, let it be this. There is severe anchoring bias against US equity and technology in particular. I repeat again, there is severe anchoring bias against all time high for US equity and technology in particular. Read me this by Jeff Bezos. Bill is without doubt one of the smartest people I know and worth listening to. Most people dramatically underestimate the remarkableness of this bull run. Such things are unstoppable until they aren't. Market teach, the lessons can be painful. What Bill has mentioned is that there's an entire generation of entrepreneurs and tech investors who built their entire perspective on valuations during the second half of a 13-year amazing bull market run. The unlearning process can be painful, surprising, and unsettling to many. I anticipate denial. Here's a further tweet that's related to this context. Previous all-time highs are completely irrelevant. It's not cheap because it's down 70%. Forget these prices happen. So if you agree, help me smash the like button. And as always, if you have questions, leave them in the comment sections below. And I have more. If you look at this chart over here, you realize that since 2017, technology has almost always been the top performer. Over the last 14 years, it's done 900 plus percent, outperforming all other sectors massively. In fact, if you look for the last 5 years, you have 4x your money. This anchoring bias has been reinforced for years already. The unwinding of technology is what I've been calling for a while and I'm getting increasingly confident about it. And I chose to produce this today for you because yesterday, the markets crashed, correct? Previous day, 4th of May 2022, Fed actually mentioned something more accommodative, 50% basis point increment only, and market rallied. And yesterday, everything came crashing down again. What I suggest is not everything is to do with Fed. In fact, Warren Buffett suggests don't listen to economic and Fed news all the time. It doesn't really help. Some also mentioned that Fed raised rates before and market rallied. They are quite possibly in denial. It has more to do with valuations than to do with interest rates. And coming to here, I have a few key rounding points for you. The first is that you won't escape this market downturn if you buy S&P 500 or if you buy the NASDAQ simply because the biggest weights are in big tech. If they are declining, there is no place to escape. The second is that you won't escape this downturn even if you are in robo portfolios that diversify because they still have a significant big overweight into US tech. That leads to this point which I'm so tired of mentioning, dollar cost averaging. I can only speak of now, I don't know when you'll be with me 6 months down the road. If you have excess cash, you have to start buying and I strongly suggest your dollar cost average. Go slow, go gradual, be willing to accept losses. That is part of the investment journey. And I think this advice would serve you well, especially if we see this downturn protract even longer than most have expected. At this moment, I still advocate a portion into commodities. How much really depends on your comfort level to volatility and to getting things wrong. For myself, I've mentioned before, I've allocated 29.8% into commodities, but that number has actually increased because I've actually accumulated when Indonesia released this news of palm oil ban. Now in the next video, I'll be explaining what I have finally figured out, which is why many do not dare to advocate investing into commodities. I'll share that with you, so if you're keen on that topic, smash the subscribe. I'll release it when it's ready and as always, if this message has benefited you, smash the like button so you can reach a bigger audience together. And with that, I'd like to invite you to one of my past videos that I've explained on the oil crisis. I believe oil prices are baked in to be at least $150. Whether you agree with me or not, check out this previous tutorial. Maybe it has some insights that you can ponder a bit deeper with. With that, I'll sign off from here and see you there. Take care and goodbye.